In my pre-test serve, I was in the low associative stage of learning. This is because I understood all the aspects of how to perform the serve and make my serve good. However, I still need feedback from peers and teachers to help me improve on the small aspects of my serve, to gain more consistency with my serve and to move into the higher associative stage of learning. After practicing my serve, I can now say that I'm the higher associative stage of learning. This is because I do not need to pay much attention when I am serving as it is now a habit. I can now perform the skill well and consistently, meaning that I have improved from the low to the high associative stage of learning. Formation. There are six aspects of formation. Bigger to smaller muscles, correct sequence over a long period of time, the direction of force, follow through movement and stable base. Bigger to smaller muscles. In my pre-test serve, I did not start using my biggest muscles in my body, as I started with the hips instead of the core. This means I will not be able to generate as much force to transfer into the ball, therefore resulting in a weak serve. My pre-test muscle sequence is as follows. The first movement of my pre-test serve is the hips, which is a deep ball and socket joint, which involves a hip flexor and the gluteus maximus. And the leg coming forward in the video shows hip flexion, with the agonist being the hip flexor and the antagonist being the gluteus maximus. Next muscle group in, is the upper leg, which involves the hamstrings and the quadriceps, which is showing a slight knee joint movement, which is a hinge joint. The front leg is in knee flexion, with the agonist being the hamstring and the antagonist being the quadricep. Hips and upper leg are my bigger muscle groups in the body. I therefore need to start with these muscles in my serve as they generate the most force in the body, which I can then transfer into the smaller and faster muscles and then into the ball. Next is the shoulder, which is a shallow ball and socket joint. This movement is shoulder extension, which involves the posterior deltoid, the anterior deltoid, the latissimus dorsi and the pectorials, with the agonist being the posterior deltoid and the latissimus dorsi and the antagonist being the anterior deltoid and the pectorials. Next in the sequence of bigger to smaller muscles is the upper arm, which involves the bicep and the tricep. This is showing elbow flexion using the hinge joint of the elbow, with the agonist being the bicep and the antagonist being the tricep. Final group in the sequence is the forearm slash wrist and lower leg slash ankle, with the ellipsoid joint of the, both the ankle and the wrist. This involves the wrist flexor and wrist extensor for the forearm and wrist, and the gastrocnemius, solus, and tibialis anterior for the lower leg and ankle. This is also showing two types of joint movements, wrist flexion, with the wrist flexor being the agonist and the wrist extensor being the antagonist, and the second type of joint movement this is showing is plantar flexion, with the gastrocnemius and solus being the agonist and the tibialis anterior being the antagonist. The shoulder, upper arm, forearm slash wrist and lower leg slash ankle are my smaller and faster muscles of the body. I use these muscles to finish off the serve as they have retained all the built up force from using bigger muscles. They also allow more accuracy when serving the ball which is why I must use bigger to smaller muscles in order to execute a good serve. Comparing using bigger to smaller muscles from my pre-test serve to my post-test serve, there is one major difference, which is in my pre-test serve I start with my hips, however in my post-test serve I begin with my core, which involves the erector spinae and the abdominals. At this point in my serve I am in trunk extension, with the agonist being the erector spinae and the antagonist being the abdominals. By starting with my core, which is the biggest muscle group in my body, instead of my hips, I can therefore generate a larger amount of force, which I can then transfer into the smaller and faster muscles, and then into the ball. As you can see in the video of my pre-test serve, I am using the correct sequence disregarding the core, however I am not using as many body parts over a long period of time with my elbow which is a hinge joint being in flexion, with the bicep being the agonist and the tricep being the antagonist. This is a short movement and will last for not a long period of time, meaning that it will not transfer as much force into the volleyball. This is bad as in order to have a flat hard serve that goes over the net, you need to generate this force. When comparing my pre-test serve to my post-test serve, you can see that I am using the correct sequence and using as many body parts over a long period of time. I was not doing this in my pre-test serve. My elbow, which is a hinge joint, is now in full extension, with the tricep being the agonist and the bicep being the antagonist. This is got good as by using the correct sequence and using as many body parts over a long period of time. This allows me to generate enough force into the serve over the ball. 
by having my elbow in full extension. This is the peak of my height of release. This is good as the greater the height of release, the greater the horizontal distance. This should therefore result in a flat hard serve which would be difficult to pick up by an opposing player. As you can see in both my pre-test and post-test videos, I am using direction of force, as both my feet are facing the same way as my shoulders. This will ensure maximum force towards my target, which is over the net. Not only will it ensure maximum force towards my target, it will also ensure that I am stable when serving, which is good as it will have an impact on my timing and accuracy, which is very important as it is not much use serving the ball hard and flat if it does not go in the court. When comparing my follow through movement on my pre test serve and my post test serve, there is a massive difference. In my pre test serve, you can clearly see that I have a slow follow through movement with my arm and my entire body. This therefore resulted in the last segment on my serve to have a major deacceleration, meaning all the generated force that have been accumulated when using bigger to smaller muscles will be lost. This is therefore bad as, in order to transfer that already generated force into the ball, I must follow through with my arm and my entire body. As you can see when looking at my post test serve, I improved on this aspect of my serve quite a lot as I am now following through with my arm and my entire body. This is good as I am now transferring all the force I have generated through using bigger to smaller muscles into the volleyball and following through with that momentum. This should therefore result in a flat hard serve. As you can see in both my pre-test and post-test serves, I ensured that I had a stable base. A stable base is very important as with a stable base, it is easier to transfer that already built up momentum. In this point of my serve, both my pre-test and post-test serves, I am using both of my knees, which are hinge joints. I am showing knee flexion in my front leg with the agonist being the hamstring and the antagonist being the quadricept. I am also showing knee extension with my back leg with the agonist being the quadricept and the antagonist being the hamstring. It is very important to have a stable base when serving the ball as without a stable base it will have an impact on my timing and accuracy, which is essential when serving the volleyball. I ensured by I had a stable base by having a wide base of support, low center of gravity and ensuring that my line of gravity remained within my base of support. Newton's laws. There are three Newton's laws. The first, the second, and the third. For my pre-test serve to my post-test serve, Newton's first law does not change in the slightest way, as the first Newton's law states that an object of rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. An object in motion continues in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Without gravity, a volleyball serve would theoretically continue in one direction at a constant speed forever. However, on Earth, it is apparent that the ball begins to fall towards the ground shortly after it is served. This, is, of course, is due to gravity, which is the unbalanced force in this case. As the volleyball begins to arc down towards the ground due to gravity, it is possible that an opposing player will pass the ball before it hits the ground, and thus the direction and speed of the ball will change. This change is made possible only through the presence of an unbalanced force, which is the opposing player. Newton's second law states that acceleration is produced when a force acts on a mass. The greater the mass of the object being accelerated, the greater the amount of force needed to accelerate the object. I have a greater amount of inertia over the volleyball. This means that I can use the force from using bigger to smaller muscles of my body to transfer into the ball, meaning I can efficiently serve the ball with enough force over the net. The harder I hit the ball, the faster it will go in whatever direction it is hit. This is why it is very important to have my direction of force towards the court. However, if the ball is not hit hard enough, then the ball will not go over the net. Also, if too much force is applied to the ball is hit too hard, the ball will travel out of bounds. As you can see by comparing my pre-test serve with my post-test serve, there is a major difference in my pre-test serve. My force is not great, meaning I have a lack of acceleration. This is mainly because I did not follow through with my body which resulted in deacceleration in the last segment of my serve. By not following through as much, I also lose all the accumulated force I have generated from using bigger to smaller muscles. This is bad as in order for the ball to go over the net, I need to ensure that I have generated enough force to transfer into the volleyball in order for it to be a flat hard serve. In my post test serve, however, I have corrected this as I have a good acceleration. This is mainly because I followed through with my serve with my entire body. My following through with my entire body, I allow myself to transfer all that accumulated force 
that was built up from using bigger to smaller muscles and transfer into volleyball. This resulted in great acceleration. This is good as in order for the ball to go over the net, I need to ensure that I've generated enough force to transfer into the volleyball to ensure the serve is hard and flat. Newton's third law states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Forces always come in pairs. There is an action and reaction forces. When I hit the volleyball in the serve, the ball hits my hand with equal force. The action force in this case is the force of the volleyball hitting my hand when I serve the ball and the paired reaction force is the force of the serve on the ball. If Newton's third law is not applied at the correct time in the serve, the reaction as a result of the action will not carry through the optimal force, therefore the serve may not have enough force to go over the net. As you can see when comparing my pre-test and my post-test serve, there is quite a big difference in timing. For my pre-test serve was late, as my elbow which is a hinge joint is in flexion, with the agonist being the bicep and the antagonist being the tricep, meaning that I did not transfer optimal force through the volleyball. This is bad as in order for the volleyball to go over the net it must have enough force behind it. However in my post test serve I improved as my timing of Newton's third law was correct as my elbow which is a hinge joint is in extension with the agonist being the tricep and the antagonist being the bicep. This means that I have generated enough force to ensure that the serve of the ball is hard and flat and goes over the net. There are two factors which have an effect on the volleyball's projectile. Propelling factors, which include speed of release, height of release and angle of release, and factors in the air, which include gravity and air resistance. When comparing both my pre-test and post-test serves, there is quite a big difference between the speed of release. In my pre-test serve, my speed of release is at medium pace. This is not good as the greater the speed of release, the greater the horizontal distance, meaning it is not very likely to go over the net. To increase my chances of my serve going over the net, I need to increase my speed of release by a considerable amount. I therefore changed this in my post test serve. As you can clearly see, my speed of release is fast, meaning that it is very likely to go over the net. However, if my speed of release is too large, there will be too much force, meaning the ball may go out of bounds. However, even though my speed of release is not fast, my angle of release is small at 33 degrees, meaning they will go flat and hard but not out of bounds. When comparing my pre-test serve for my post-test serve, there is a massive difference between both heights of release. For my pre-test serve, as you can see, my elbow, which is a hinge joint, is in elbow flexion, with the bicep being the agonist and the tricep being the antagonist. This is not a very good way to serve the ball as the greater the height of release, the greater the horizontal distance, meaning that it is very unlikely that the ball will go over the net. I then made a large improvement on this as in my post-test serve, my arm is in full extension, which is called elbow extension, using the hinge joint of the elbow, with the tricep being the agonist and the bicep being the antagonist. This is a very good way to serve the ball as the greater the height of release, the greater the horizontal distance, meaning that it is very likely the that ball will go over the net. When comparing my angle of release for my pre-test serve and my post-test serve, there is a major difference. As shown in my pre-test serve, my angle of release when I serve the ball is 71 degrees. By having my release point at 71 degrees, this means that the ball is lobbing over the net and that the serve won't go hard. This means that it will be easily picked up by an opposing player and it may not go over the net. In order to have a flat hard serve for some of my height, the ball should be released around 30 to 40 degrees. I then improved this by a considerable amount as in my post test serve my angle of release was 33 degrees with my elbow which is a hinge joint in full extension with the agonist being the tricep and the antagonist being the bicep. I have to do this in order to get the ball over the net with a flat serve. This is solely because of my height and for someone that is taller than me they may have a smaller angle of release of 25 for example. Without gravity, a volleyball serve would theoretically continue in one direction at the constant speed forever. On Earth, however, it is apparent that the volleyball begins to fall towards the ground shortly after it is served. This, of course, is due to gravity, the unbalanced force in this case. As the ball begins to arc down towards the ground due to gravity, it is possible that an opposing player will pass the ball before it hits the ground and thus the direction and speed of the ball will change. This change is made possible only through the presence of an unbalanced force which is the opposing player.
The four sports psychology principles I applied throughout my pre-test and post-test serve were visualisation, routine, confidence and concentration. First sports psychology that I applied in both my pre-test and post-test serves was visualisation. As you can see in both my pre-test and post-test serves, I am taking my time and visualising me serving the ball over the net. However, in my post-test serve, I am also visualising using bigger to smaller muscles, having a good speed and height of release, as well as following through with my serve. I ensured that I visualised these aspects of my serve for my post-test as I knew that I did not apply these principles in my pre-test. I needed to do this in order to serve the ball with enough force over the net. Second sports psychology, which I only applied in my pre-test serve, was having a routine. As you can see, before I am serving the ball, I bounce it. This is my routine as I am practicing hitting the ball in the correct place with my hand. This should help me with my action and reaction forces, as in order to complete the serve accurately and forcefully, I need my action and reaction forces to be strong. This should help me serve the ball over the net as I am practicing where I should serve the ball, meaning that hopefully it doesn't come off the side of my hand. My third sports psychology that I am applying only in my post-test serve is confidence. I am going into the serve with a lot of confidence as I have been practicing and I have served the ball over the net accurately lots of times. By being confident in what I am doing, this increases my performance. I was not confident, however, in my pre-test serve, as I hadn't served the ball over very many times in a row. This was a lack of practice and decreased my confidence. The final aspect of sports psychology that I applied in both my pre-test and post-test serves is concentration. As you can see, I am taking my time before the serve and concentrating on using bigger to smaller muscles and also using them in the correct sequence, which will help me get the serve successfully over the net. Therefore, this should help me get the ball over the net in comparison to if I was distracted by something else. What type of training worked best for me? Whole, part, or whole, part, whole. After practicing all three types of training, I believe that whole, part, whole worked best for me. This is because I was able to practice a skill and figure out what aspects of the serve I needed to improve on. For me, these aspects were the follow-through movement, my timing, and my body movement. I went to the side and practiced serving without the ball so I could focus on how my body was moving and the timing of each body part. I also practiced having a quick follow through movement. I did this about 10 times and once I was happy with this I added in the ball and noticed an improvement. This is just one example of how I used whole part whole learning throughout my training. This is a good way for me to learn as I could focus and use my sports psychology aspect of visualization and visualize using bigger to smaller muscles and in the correct sequence in training and without a ball before bringing it into a game. By doing whole learning first I could analyze what aspects were going wrong with my serve. By then doing part learning, I was able to focus on each aspect of my serve, such as the toss, the leg movement, the arm movement, the placement of my hand on the ball, and also the follow-through movement. The arm movement and leg movement of the serve are both very important, as in order to execute the serve with enough force, I need to use bigger to smaller muscles, such as the quadriceps and hamstrings of the upper leg, to the smaller and faster muscles, such as the wrist flexor and wrist extensor of the forearm as well as using them in the correct order. The following through movement is also very important, as if I did not follow through with my serve, the last segment of my serve would have a major deacceleration, resulting in the majority of my already built up force from using bigger to smaller muscles to be lost. By using whole part whole learning, I was able to focus on these aspects majorly when practicing and trying to improve my pre-test serve. This was good as those aspects of force formation I did not apply in my pre-test serve. Therefore, whole part whole learning I felt was the best way for me to improve my pre-test serve. The impacting factors included the weather, the facilities and the competition. The weather affected me when I was training as even though we were in the gym, if it was raining, the other PE classes would have to come in the gym where we were. This resulted in the gym being full of people, meaning we did not have as much space to do our game of training. This had a major effect on my sports psychology aspect of concentration, as I had a lack of concentration when there were other classes in the gym, as the majority of the time they were either mucking around or playing a different game to us. This had a major distraction for me, as I was distracted when other people were in the gym, this resulted in me not to get the most out of that training session.
the facilities. The facilities affected me when I was training as the majority of the time we used the bad balls, the white and blue balls, instead of the good balls, the green, white and red balls. I feel as though the bad balls had an effect on my training and it was not really a true estimate of where I was at with my skill as I felt more confident using the good balls. I feel as though there is not much difference between the two sets of balls, however it was mentally driven into my head that the blue and white balls were bad and the green, red and white balls were good. This has definitely had an effect on my confidence when I was practicing my serve, which therefore impacted my performance, as I found the more confident I was, the better I performed. The final aspect that had an impact on my training was competition. The competition affected me when I was training and practicing my serve as if my team was competing against a low skill level team, I would have to adjust my serve so it would be easy for them to pick up, which therefore did not develop my serve in the slightest way. However, when I was playing a good competition team, I was able to try new things and serve to, at my full potential, which therefore developed and helped me train to improve my serve, meaning the competition level had a major effect on how fast I improved with my serve. Doing a full analysis of my serve, I can now say that I have moved from the low associative stage of learning to the high associative stage of learning. This is because I do not need to pay much attention when I am serving as it is now a habit. I can perform the skill well and consistently. All of the pyromechanical principles help me to improve my serve. However, the most was force summation. I had to work on my force summation a lot as in my previous serve I was not using bigger to smaller muscles over a long period of time and I was also not following through. By not using all of these aspects of floor summation on my pre-test serve, the serve was weak and had minimal force behind it. Even though floor summation was the most important biomechanical principle, projectile motion was also very important. In my pre-test serve, I was not using the correct speed, height or angle of release. This therefore resulted in the ball to be lobbing over the net, which is not a good way to serve the ball. However, I then made a lot of changes to my full summation and projectile motion, resulting in my serve to be more accurate and consistent, which moved me from the low associative stage of learning to the high associative stage of learning.